apply, I want to talk about lenses and CMOS sensors. Um, the larger the CMOS sensor, the CMOS sensor is the thing that actually uh, gathers the the light that you know it's 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 what's in the very back of the camera, and the lens is in front of it, and it you know points everything towards this area, and that's what actually makes the most difference in image quality is that CMOS. Well, I mean, if you have a really crappy lens, you know, obviously that's not going to look good either, but um, so many camera companies will uh, will try to market their cameras on the megapixels. And it's just like, well, yeah, you could have a gigapixel camera, but if the, little, the CMOS sensor is this tiny little, you know, Oh look at me! Look at the the edge of this this pen here, right? This little, or even smaller. I mean, some of them are just. I mean, they're just fucking tiny. You know. Well, you're still going to have the look of any of of the the image quality. Is still going to be the look of of something that small. It's you're not going to actually get any more clarity of the image after a certain amount of pic, of megapixels. It just well, there's no point. Um most cameras that have the small a CMOS sensor uh, I mean you could have you could have a, at five megapixels and it would it would look just fine you can't really make it do any better than that but if you're shopping for cameras you know look into CMOS size look at the, look into the sensor size because that's what's going to give you the best image um, you know, and oftentimes they won't even give you that information you have to go looking around for it they're not going to give that on the stats for for the camera because well if you're looking for that you shouldn't uh, be wanting one of these point and shoots right so anyway <laughs> I mean as far as smartphones um, there's this one by Panasonic um, that isn't supported by Verizon but I still think it would have been really cool to have it's the largest sized CMOS sensor on a, on a camera, and, and I mean this camera is just it's just it's it's pretty bulky for for being a smartphone. It's not it's not the thing that you want for a, having a small phone, but the uh, the CMOS sensor is a kind of a a halfway point between what you have on this camera that I'm using now and the usually the largest you find on one of these, and you know it's 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 pretty big. And uh, I just still think that would have been an awesome phone to have, because I mean it's 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 what it's what you use to look up information. You look do all these things with, and to actually have one of those that can actually put uh, create decent quality images, you know, that you can zoom into, and you still have more actual, real, more detail. Yeah, that's cool. Anyway, um, God, three minutes on that, and I haven't gotten to the the part about this idea. So imagine a, a, uh, a CMOS that's like this, the size of this. I mean, it could be bigger, but I'll, I'll explain that in a moment. And imagine if they had this series of lenses that are, that are just, they're, they're, they're almost covering each other, right? And they're tiny and they, and they're they're all laid out in this way where when you look at it it just looks like it it's kind of this glistening glassy looking thing and it's just a layer a thin little bitty thin layer put right on top of this giant sea moss right and the way that the uh, the way that that the software would I mean, well the way that, that this would view things if you weren't going through the software it almost looked like uh, what a bee sees you know all it's all split up into these little 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 bitty things right um the software translates it to something that can be used this one was actually used and uh It would allow, I mean, different parts of the image that the CMOS is receiving, you could adjust for all these little things. So you could have 
certain areas that are let's say for for surveillance in a store certain areas that are normally dark you can make i mean you could make everything completely even in that regard you know everything evenly lighted evenly lit lighted lit which is it anyway um it would just allow for some cool things but it could be even made even bigger imagine if you had a strip it's as wide as this but it's just a strip that goes all the way down the center part of the ceiling of a, of a business um, and the amount of detail that they could get at any given time and if this there is this format that things could be saved in that um, you know it, like a, a live raw uh, file a, a, a video raw file that also has you know, a, a this way that when, when you when you go to view it again you could you could still adjust everything after the fact you know adjust the brightnesses and, and and exposure and all of that after the fact so um i don't know i just think the applications that i mean this, this sort of technology could make a uh um well, it could certainly blow away the uh, action cams that they have now. But, I mean, this is something you could have on your fucking... You could put on your hat. Put on your hat. It's got... It's, it, you know, it could even... It could be curved. It could be just about any shape. If you made it a cube and, and mounted a certain way, it could be used for doing the... Uh, or not even a, a sphere. Make it a sphere. Why did I say a cube? I make it a sphere. It's entirely coded with that, and you've got your perfect 360, um, you know, 360 view. I mean, perfect. I don't know. I just, it just seems like a cool idea. And if it's already been done, then I'm sorry for just ranting off about something that already exists. But um, this just seems cool to me.